Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD. And uh, a lot of you have asked me, how do you set up UEFI within MDT and SCCM successfully? Now, I typically send you guys a link on a video that I did a long time ago. I believe it was the server room episode nine. It was a live stream that I did. Uh, I pushed out, I believe, a Windows server operating system to a Lenovo server. And the server had UEFI enabled on it. I showed you guys my DHCP settings because that's the way that I pushed out the operating system successfully to that particular system that had the firmware interface enabled within BIOS. Now, uh, rather than me sending that link to you guys constantly and you have to like watch the entire one hour and a half video, I decided to just show you guys how I have my setup done. So, First things first, the way that I have UEFI set up is within my DHCP server. So these are my scope options. As you can see, I have a lot of them. Uh, you are able to create your scope options manually, but the way that I configured it was by policies. I have four policies. I'm not, I don't recall if the default boot P class is set up for you automatically but I'm going to show you guys how it looks okay now within the default boot P class I have the following in the general tab that's the policy name the description the least duration of the DHCP client I think this is all default within the conditions this is what I have uh, if I click on edit this is basically the values that I have on the default boot P uh, policy okay Within IP address range, I don't really have anything. Within options, nothing is set within options. And for DNS, again, I think this is the default when you're creating a policy. Now, the next one in my list is the Pixie Client uh, BIOS for 86 and 64. Now, the policy name is something that I used. You can name it whatever you want. It's up to you. It doesn't really make a difference. And as well as the description. doesn't matter. For this policy, I did not set a lease duration, okay? For the conditions, I did a vendor class, the operator equals to the value of a Microsoft Windows 2000 options with the following, right? Pixie client, open and close parentheses of BIOS x86 and x64. At the end of it, it's an asterisk for a wildcard, okay? And for the IP address arranged, nothing. For the options, I did have a couple of things enabled on this policy. One, 66 and 67. 66 is actually the your SCCM or your MDT server IP address. For 67, you're actually going to give it the boot file name, which is going to be the WDSNBP.com. Okay? This is for BIOS. UEFI is a little different, which I'm going to show you guys pretty soon. For DNS, again, I left it as the default. Now for the policy for the UEFI 86-bit, again, this is the policy name. You can give it whatever you want. The description and the lease policy, I didn't give it anything. Now for the conditions, this is where this is important. Uh, the conditions I did the following. The condition is a vendor class equals to the following of Microsoft Windows 2000 options. And within there, I did Pixie Client. Again, it has to be the same way that I have it here. Pixie capitalized client with a capital C, space open and close parentheses, and inside the open and close parentheses, you're going to do UEFI x86. Outside the parentheses, you're going to give it an asterisk. Okay? UEFI also has to be capitalized. Okay? And within the IP address range tab, nothing was added, but within the options, I enabled 60, which is your Pixie client. The string value for 60 is going to be Pixie client. The way that you see it right here is the same way that you should have it within your environment. Capital P, capital X, capital E, capital C. The next vendor class that I enabled with that policy would be 66 and 67, okay? So for your UEFI 86 policy, you need to enable 60, 66, 67. For 66, again, you will enter the IP address of your MDT or SCCM server. For 67, you need to enter the following string. Boot backslash x86 backslash WDSMGFW 
dot EFI. Now within the DNS tab, default. Nothing's changed in there. Now for the last policy, which is going to be for the 64-bit UEFI, uh, again, policy name is up to you. Description, up to you. Conditions are going to be the following. Again, vendor class equals to Microsoft Windows 2000 options. And inside, the same way that you see it with the capital P, capital X, capital E, capital C, client, Open and close parentheses, all caps, UEFI, lowercase x, 64, and outside the parentheses, an asterisk for wildcard. Okay? Within the IP address range tab, nothing. For options, same thing that we did with the 86. We need to enable 60, 66, and 67. For 60, it's the same string value that you enter for your 86-bit. Pixie client. All caps, the same way that you see it right here on the screen. The next one would be 66. Again, your MDT server or your SCCM. I'm doing it the IP address. I don't know if it's going to work with the full qualified domain, but hey, go for it. Try it out. Let me know at the comment section if it works out for you. The last one would be your 67. It would be boot backslash x64 backslash wds mgw.efi and for your dns tab default and that's it guys those are my settings that i have within my lab uh when i want to implement or push out an operating system on a machine that has uefi enabled within the bios uh, and that's how I've done it with previous live streams when I had these servers that has that firmware interface enabled and I push out the operating system successfully with you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Leave comments right below and I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.